Alrighty, g'day guys, welcome back to another David Maxwell Golf video. I have been waiting to do this video for you guys and the stars just have not aligned, but it is a Flightscope Mevo Plus versus a Garmin R10 part two, where I have full swings uh, with both devices and you guys get to see how the numbers stack up. Now, certain problems have occurred while I've been trying to film this video. For example, we have had, uh, before this last week, we've had torrential rain on and off for the last two and a half weeks. Uh, I was borrowing the Flightscope Mevo off uh, a great friend, Dave Thomas, from Global Golf Tech Solutions, and he was gracious enough to let me have it for that period of time. The problem was trying to get it to be able to coordinate where I could have full swings outside with the driver. I can swing up to a four iron in my garage, but outside with the driver, it just didn't really work. So what I've had to do is I've had to go on two separate days and, uh, and basically hit these shots to get them done. I've only just been able to get the Garmin R10s done today. Um, however, they are all done. So I've got all of the numbers from the Flightscape Mevo Plus. I've got all of the numbers from the Garmin R10. And if you can't tell, I'm extremely sweaty because I've just been out there hitting drives. Now, I know what you're already thinking. Well, how can you compare them and, and whatever? Look, I understand that if you're gonna have them side by side, that's gonna be the most accurate like we did in part one. And I'm sorry that I couldn't do that again. It was just logistically, it just did not work. However, I am a golfer, I am not a robot. So on different days, I'm gonna be hitting different balls and different swing speeds and whatever, um, which is good actually, because I think that it, it probably credits the accuracy of the data from the two devices even more when I've hit them on different days. And Going through them already myself, you're gonna be incredibly amazed by the data that's actually there on both devices and exactly how close it is. So without giving too much away, I've got it on the screen recording. Let's take a look at it now. We're gonna start from nine iron um, because I, I hit nine iron here in my garage uh, with the Garmin R10. So I'm gonna throw the Garmin R10 numbers up here um, and then I'm gonna jump in with the, the Flightscope Mevo numbers. So basically what we've got is we've got the Garmin R10 uh, if I take a look at it here, um, the, the, again, the annoying thing about the E6 is because I work in meters, you've got to constantly convert it back from um, yards to meters to make sure your data is accurate. But this time I have a calculator on my watch, so I'm just going to do it that way. So, ball speed with a 99 average um, for the Garmin R10, 105 miles per hour. Ball speed average for um, the Mevo Plus. 103.9, we're talking 1.1 mile an hour difference um, over uh, you know different days. And by the way, I'm not gonna show you a million shots because it's just gonna bore you guys. So I'm just gonna jump in here and then you're gonna see some drives at the end with the Garmin R10. Um, eight iron, let's run through these. Oh, sorry. So ball speed, we've got 1.1 mile an hour difference. Club speed, 87 versus 87.1. That is pretty damn close considering they're on different days. Carry distance, 123.9 with the Mevo Plus. So 123.9, the Garmin says 138 yards. So 138 multiplied by 0.9144 is the conversion, equals 126.18 meters. So basically we are talking two point something meters, 2.4 or five, something like that. I'm not gonna bother calculating it right in my brain. Um, it's basically 124 meters to 126.1, 2.18 meters. There you go. Um, eight iron. Let's flick into the eight iron. We have a lot more shots on the eight iron. Um, 107 with the Garmin R10 was a ball speed. Ball speed is 109.8, so 2.8 mile an hour quicker um, with the Mevo Plus, but the club speed was also 1.1 mile an hour quicker on different days. So 1. mile an hour club speed, 2.2 mile an hour ball speed. It's basically the same swinging it on different days. Uh, spin, I guess we didn't do the spin for the 99. I will say that I don't have the metal dot on the Mevo Plus. So you need to have a metal dot on the ball, otherwise the spin is italicized, which means that it's basically trying to guess. Um, so that's why I'm not reading the spin numbers out with them. The spin numbers on the Garmin are spot on. So if you see the spin numbers on the Garmin on the back spin, um, 7,600 uh, with the eight iron is spot on for me. Eight iron, 135.4 meters of carry. And the Garmin is 147 multiplied by 0.9144. 
134.41 meters a carat. So we have literally a meter difference with one mile an hour quickest club speed, two mile an hour quicker ball speed. They are basically identical. Um, look, let's let's skip to the five iron, uh, maybe the six iron. We'll skip to the six iron because the numbers are all the same. I've looked at them myself; they're all the same, pretty much right the way through. Uh, six iron, 157 meters of carry uh, with the Mevo Plus. Uh, 89.2 is the club speed. 88 is the club speed on the Garmin R10. Again, they are identical. Um, ball speed 122.3 ball speed on the Garmin 120 that can go down to strike location because if we take a look um, at the smash factor we've got 1.5 on the Mevo Plus uh, sorry 1.35 on the Mevo Plus 1.38 they're very similar um, and 157 meters of carry versus 175 yards so 175 by 0.9144 again oh, hang on 175 by 0.9144 160.02 so we are like 2.3 meters difference 2.3 meters difference on different days with great strikes on both of them it's just basically how it's going to, it's going to happen like that for anybody um, you know let alone two launch monitors on completely different days in different settings by the way um, five iron so five iron, we've basically got three shots there on the on the R10. Ball speed 126, ball speed 122. That could come down to just not hitting enough shots on the R10. Uh, club speed 90.4. Club speed on the Garmin R10 is 91. So they are again identical. I'm rushing through these. If you think the numbers are too quick, I do apologise. They're just basically the same. Um, carry 165.8 meters. Um, carry 191 yards. So. 191 by 0.9144 175 so there is a bit of difference but I will say that I hit a lot more shots with the I think I did anyway detailed how many shots did I hit with the 5 iron with Amiibo mm, not that many more 5 so we actually see a lot of people are saying that when you get into the long irons the garment is, is shorter um, but what we can see here is it's actually longer. I hit three shots with the Garmin, five shots with the Mevo Plus, and the Garmin is, in fact, 10 meters further. So, make of that what you will. But honestly, on different days, I've seen them identical. So, it's really hot. I'm going to have a drink. All right, so. The moment that you guys have all been waiting for, which is the driver numbers. Now, before I, I switch to the shots that I just hit out there into the net, uh, the Spawnier net, by the way, check out Spawnier. If you haven't checked them out, they have amazing nets. Um, let me just read out to you the, the Mevo numbers. They're going to be here anyway, but basically the carry, 236.5 meters, which is pretty average for me. Um, it was with the range balls, as you can see there on top. The range balls with the Mevo, they do have... A, uh, an algorithm which converts that back to the distances which is really close to just using a standard ball. Club speed 109.4. Like I said, I was outside, I was having a lot freer swings. I was trying to hit them hard. Um, that's where I got to. Ball speed 151.5. Look, I'm, I'm not a massive driver of the ball anymore. It used to be I have slowed down considerably. Um, and Smash Factor there was actually quite poor, 1.39, but they were range balls, so I'm thinking that may be what that is there. Let's take a look at some of the, uh, that's basically the benchmark, right? So the Mevo Plus here to $3,500 unit compared to an $879 unit. So that's going to be the benchmark before we head out there and actually hit some shots. So 236 meters of carry, 109.4 club speed, which is by the way, quick for me. Uh, normally I'm somewhere between 106 and 109. Uh, ball speed 150 and uh, let's go hit some shots and see how we, uh, how we come out. Alrighty guys, <clears throat> so we've seen the uh, numbers of the Mevo, which basically is what the Garmin R10 has to live up to. So, I'll be honest, I haven't actually hit the Garmin R10 a whole lot with the driver in the simulator, but I've got it running here. I'm gonna put it on screen so you guys can see, and uh, let's see how we go. I have warmed up just maybe half an hour ago. I was at the range hitting some seven iron, so there's no excuses there. However, the first few swings will probably be slow. I'm guessing 100 to 105 mile an hour. 
just because I'm gonna get used to hitting it into that net. But once we gain confidence, we should be you know, up around that 108, 109 mark and uh, hitting some good balls. So let's see, I got it on down here, so I'll be looking down there. See if we can get it going. All right. Ready. I didn't get that very well. Kind of actually had me aimed out there, but it's got 200 meters carry, 220 total distance, 100 club speed. Swing speed will still be down. Wow. So, what do we got? Yeah, see, swing speed's only 100 and 102, and it's still saying 220 carries, so not too bad. The swing speed will get up. Ah, that's a bad strike. Wouldn't even look into that one. It's gone gone further because the swing speed was up but very bad strike 233 I will say my actual carry when I'm swinging on course at about 180 is probably around about 230 235 carry so about 245 total I actually felt like I hit the middle it wasn't low got here 218 234 so for the numbers it's probably right let's up the uh, club speed now we'll try and get it to about 108 see what the numbers look like there all right now what we're going to do we've warmed up you know we're kind of already warm really going to try and lay into some get to that 110 mark which is a bit of a stretch for me lately i'm getting, getting a bit older than i used to be but let's see That was good, that was really good. That one was probably the best hit. I feel like the flight is coming out a bit too low though. So, I don't know whether that might be the distance to the net or what. So let's move the net back a little and see how that changes it. A bit fatty. Baby, bit spinny. Or maybe not. It says it's going to draw. But it did help. So having the net back a little further actually helped the, the read there, the distance. It's probably right. It didn't feel like the quickest swing. So that felt that one there felt exactly like what I would probably hit on course and see what comes up. So 107, 230, 242 is pretty bang on. 3000 spin, I do tend to have a bit higher spin, so. We used to have this term of cricket where we call it last six. So we absolutely belt the crap out of the last six balls if you're batting in the nets and bowlers hated it. But anyway, we're gonna have the last six here. I'm gonna swing out of my shoes for these last six see where we get to and what the numbers look like and uh, hopefully I can hit the middle of this thing. I'm hitting them fine. I'm, I feel like I'm hitting them pretty close to the center. Seven. That last one is pretty much identical to what I'd see on course. 235 carry, 245 total. Yeah. That was that was hit really, really hard. It got it too. Like it, it seriously picks up the difference. You know. That's perfect. 109.4. Obviously, it's me that's swinging it a bit slower today. But yeah. All right, guys, so we are back. You've seen the shots that have been hit. Obviously, started with a slower swing speed there, 100 mile an hour, 102 mile an hour, whatever, and then ended up getting over 109. 
which is basically my top speed. So, we had the benchmark set by the Flightscape Mevo, 236.5 meters carry, 109 club speed, ball speed of 150, and, uh, well, the spin and smash factor there is really not that relevant because it doesn't read it properly. Um, now, incorporating every single shot that I hit, not just the, the latter ones where I was warmed up, but every single shot that I hit, we have, as I flick it up on the screen, ball speed. 149 that is including the swings which were 100 mile an hour and obviously have a lot slower ball speed club speed 106 the minimum there as you can see is 100 the maximum is 109 so that's including every single swing that i have it's obviously going to bring the average down when i'm swinging the first 10 shots at 100 mile an hour the latter ones is going to average it out there at 106 honestly i think it would probably be about 108 if i didn't have those first few shots at 100 mile an hour but anyway Smash factor 1.41. So we've got a tick of the ball speed, we have a tick on the club speed, we have a tick on the smash factor, the carry distance. If we have the carry distance right, then basically we're all singing and dancing. So 246 yards, this is including the slow swings, right? Uh, 246 yards multiplied by 0.9144 equals 224 meters of carry. However, if you see the last 10 shots, which I'll show you on the screen, I already have, um, you'll see that the carry is definitely there. It gets over 243 in total. I think the biggest was, well, I could probably see here. Uh, let's see, so we've got minimum carry there. So minimum carry distance of 219 yards, which is very, very short. Obviously that's the uh, 100 mile an hour swing speed. Maximum carry of 260 yards. So if we take that max shot there, ball speed of 154, club speed of 109, smash factor 1.44, carry of 260 yards. Uh, let's see, 260 multiplied by 0 0.9144, 237.9144 meters. Another tick. So the Garmin R10 in every single area is matched to the Mevo Plus. You can, once you set it up, you see me hitting the shots there. There's nothing special about it. I'm getting the distances. By the way, there is an update for the Garmin. If you haven't updated it, make sure you update it through the Garmin Express app. Um, but as a comparison, who is better? Who would you rather spend your money on? The Garmin R10 or the Flightscope Mevo Plus? What is the difference? Well, to me, there is a very big glaring difference. Despite all of this data, there is a massive difference between the two and that is the Flightscope app. The Flightscope Mevo app is incredible, it is powerful, it is so easy to use, the analytics, the data, you can just delete shots that are bad shots really easily. You can convert things, you can have range balls, you can have normal balls, you can change the weather conditions and do all of that kind of stuff. Garmin, you can't. E6, you can't. E6 is really quite a clunky app. Um, it gives you enough of the data and the stuff that I'm showing you right now to be able to take a look over it and go, okay, yeah, that's where I'm at. But if you wanted to do anything with that, E6 kind of sucks. Um, but the Garmin does have the advantage with E6, which I think you can purchase with Mevo Plus, where you can play the rounds and it has free subscriptions and stuff like that, which are really cool as well. I haven't done much sim golf, I plan to. Uh, you've got the practice areas there on the sim golf. So that side of it is really good. In terms of usability, the Mevo Plus wins it with the app. They also have the skills app, which I've used, and that's really cool too. But does it equate for the difference between three and a half thousand dollars and eight hundred and seventy-nine dollars, like literally two and a half grand, basically? No, I, I just don't think that it does. I think that the numbers are there on the on the Mevo as well as the Garmin R10. That they're identical. I mean, you can see here, you can see from the shots, you can see everything is working on both devices on completely different days, mind you, spitting out the same data for me as a golfer, so that's where I must be at. Um, and by the way, I mean, the dispersions and the, the lines, the draws, the fades, they're both fantastic on both devices. There is nothing wrong with them at all. I just think that Flightscope currently have a problem in the market with the Mevo Plus because the Garmin R10 has entered the scene. Um, there is nothing against the Mevo Plus at all. It is a fantastic unit. It also has its own Wi-Fi, which is incredible. The R10 doesn't, which can be difficult if you're going out to the range and you're trying to, uh, trying to use it. You'd have to tether to your iPad or just have it off your phone, which is a very small screen. If I was to purchase any of these again, 
I would probably go the Garmin R10 only because it is such a good device for the price point it beats pretty much everything on the market um, value for money is a Mevo plus a better unit yeah, look I'd say it's a better unit but it's a lot more expensive for not much more um, it is a lot quicker in reading the ball flights it's a lot quicker in calculating its algorithm it's its app is a lot better but is it that much better I don't think so that's my take guys I hope you love the video and uh, smash the like button hit subscribe do all those amazing things it really helps the channel really helps my content and I'll see you guys soon Cheers.